How to be a gym hater. All right, I'm gonna start off by saying that all these fitness hippies out there are gonna try and tell you that fitness is you versus you. Okay, I got a question for you. If that's true, then why the fuck am I trying to be the biggest dude in here? They call me old fashioned, but I thought this was America, home of the nuclear bomb, and in this country, you're only winning if someone's losing. So as a gym hater, you got two options. Get bigger, or make everyone else smaller, which leaves you with one option. Here's the official gym hater playbook. Okay, number one, everyone is on juice. Maybe you've never set foot in a gym in your life. Maybe you have body image issues you're looking to justify. Maybe you're just plain old fat and lazy, or as you like to call it, patriotic. Or maybe you've been busting your ass in the gym, doing the same three exercises for three sets of ten to success for the last three years. Maybe you've been going ham every weekend because of all the strict dieting you do during the week on Tuesday. And maybe you're disgruntled by your lack of gains. That's fine. What you need to do is you need to find a way to feel good about yourself without doing anything for yourself. What you don't need is all these in-shape humans existing and being visible and exposing your lack of willpower and real power. Just remember, None of this is your fault, because everyone is on juice, and you're better because you're not. Number two, everyone skips leg day. All right, when you accuse somebody of skipping leg day, you're pointing out three facts. Number one, their legs are small, which is true. Number two, they're not a serious lifter because they don't train half the body, which is also true. And number three, you're a serious lifter because you don't skip leg day, which is not the question at hand. You're the dude that calls elbows and beer pong. Yeah, it's cheap. And sure, calling elbows is like lifting legs. No one gives a shit, and it gets you zero pussy. But hey, at least this shot doesn't count. It's easy to accuse somebody of skipping leg day, because nine times out of ten, they do. But it's even better when the dude that's got you hating is crushing legs three times a week because his legs are a problem area. Tough shit, Lieutenant Dan. Like they say, build a thousand bridges and suck one dick. You're not a bridge builder, you're a dick sucker. You're just calling it like you see it. Okay, number three, the internet is your friend. Your only friend. You're a hate sniper. Taking shots from a safe distance at a wide open target that can't see you. This is both dirty and effective. Like the uh, fleshlight you got stashed in your sock drawer with all your butt stuff. You see, now with the internet, you can pick apart your enemies without jumping in the battlefield yourself. You want to get in and out like you were never even there. Which is the same tactic you employ on vaginas and on life in general. That's called basic training. Number four. Everyone's diet is bullshit, and they don't know anything about nutrition. You've spent years religiously following your diet. You know more about nutrition than tit milk, and your gains are on the way. When people see results using different methods than you, this is a direct assault to your life. If you change now, you're going to lose those gains you worked so hard to almost have. These radical terrorist diets can't work, because if they did, then you might actually have to open your mind, and then the gays win. If someone counts their macros, tell them it's bullshit and they'll never see hardcore results because they don't have the discipline you do to follow a strict diet. If someone eats clean, tell them they're brainwashed by bro science and they have an eating disorder. Whatever you do, be sure to attack their choices, logic, and work ethic. Then tell them they need Jesus. Number five, you're stronger because you have functional strength. Okay, you're not the strongest dude in the gym, but you did a mud run last month and you played lax in college. Junior college. That makes you the strongest dude in the gym. You play? Yeah, I played in college. Played for stronger than you. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna coke at. Get into debates about how these meatheads will never have to use bench press in real life. And let them know that your functional strength is way more useful in real life for things such as steering a gigantic sailboat, working on the railroad in 1890, bearing the crushing weight of your failed dreams as a semi-pro athlete, and having sex with men. Always remember, your functional strength is greater than their actual strength. Because when push comes to shove, they're just pushing weight. And you're shoving your kid at a Little League game because he's a reflection of all your failures and needs to be reminded of how you once had a function. Okay, and lastly, number six, blame genetics. If you've completely run out of ways to bring other people down to justify your shortcomings, then go straight to the source of life, DNA. When you blame genetics, you follow hater rule number one. Take away their credit and remove your accountability. That dude's only big because he's got good genetics. If you had his genetics, you'd be twice as big. It's math. 
let me paint you a picture here. No one's gonna fault the retard for washing his dick in a sink at Chili's. Just like no one's gonna fault you for not being as big as the dude with all the good genetics. You just have it harder, man. This is the hand you would dealt. But what separates you from someone that's mentally retarded is a retarded person doesn't complain about their genetics. That's a rookie move. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, new videos every time you get late. Step it up, balls in your court or in your mouth.